Hey guys, what's going on today? I got a quick one. I just want to address a couple comments. Uh, our good brother Kip shared a video uh, about no election anxiety. I actually shared it the other day. It was about the pre-tribulation rapture. I just want to address a couple comments. I always see people attacking the message of the catching away, the rapture. It always happens. But uh, I got some scripture pulled up, and I just want to clarify a couple things real quick. I did this video a while back, but uh, I think I ran out of space on my iPad or something. So I had to clean up some space. Hopefully, it won't stop recording for me. But uh, this is to one, this Kaiwan guy. And these people, they, they just put all kinds of stuff in the comments, but they don't back it up with any scripture. But he says, but I've got good news for you. The tribulation period is only 42 months, not seven years. So a lot of people will see this and they'll believe it without going back to the scripture to search it out. But uh, here, check this out. Okay, uh, you go to the book of Daniel 927. This is actually my birthday. But uh, it says, and this is talking about the Antichrist, the son of perdition. He says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This is a week of years. This is Daniel's 70th week. Okay, this is seven years. And the seven years is divided into two halves. But it says, in the midst of the week, so in the midpoint of the seven years, he shall uh, cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So he's going to put a stop to the, the sacrifices in the temple and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. So I know a lot of you guys have heard this, but the Antichrist is basically going to show his true colors at the midway point. But it also tells us in Revelation 11, 2, if you go down the bottom, it says, uh, it says, well, I'll just read the whole thing. He says, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city. Shall they tread underfoot forty and two months? Forty and two months. That's pretty specific. That's half of seven years right there. Okay, go to uh, Revelation eleven three. Here's the other half. He says, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy, prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. This is also half of seven years. But like I said in Daniel, he talks about one week. So there's a week of years, that's seven years. So you can't say the Great Tribulation is not seven years when the Scripture confirms it in multiple verses. But one more comment I want to touch on. And uh let's see if I can find it. It was at top. No, it's not at the top. Okay, here we go. Good sister, Justine DeVoe. I've known her for a long time. She's a great sister. I'm not picking on her. But I've heard her say this because a lot of people will say what she's getting ready to say, and then other people will just parrot what they say without actually searching the Scripture. But she just put, Scripture never taught a secret pre-trib rapture. Okay, Justine, I'm going to show you some Scriptures, but... Anyway, she says, this was taken from Schofield and Darby. I've heard that, that, you know, that they came up with it, that they invented it. I've even heard that some lady named Margaret McDonald. I mean, this has been, people been saying this for years. They'll say that, but then they don't back it up with any proof. But what it is, is the, the rapture is actually in the Bible. I'm going to show you. Schofield and Darby were just theologians or whatever they were. They just teached it but they didn't invent it because the bible is a whole lot older than they are because when i was younger probably in my late teens or early 20s started studying and looking into the rapture i had never heard of Schofield or darby didn't know who they were i wasn't studying them i was studying the scripture but let me just show you go back to my notes Okay, uh, the whole part of the rapture, the catching away, was a mystery that Paul, it was revealed to Paul on the road to Damascus. But in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty one, 
He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. So there's a group of people that aren't going to die. He says, But we shall all be changed. So there is a group of people that are going to get called up to meet the Lord in the air. If you read 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 and 18, he says, Then we which are alive and remain, these are the people that are left on this earth, shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is supposed to be a comfort that we are going to get called up. We're not appointed God's wrath. We're not going to be here when the son of perdition rules this world and forces people to worship him, take a mark, or die for it. That's com That would not be comfort. Comfort is we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's comfort. Okay. You might say, well, is it pre, is it before the tribulation, or is it halfway point, or is it at the end? Well, if you read Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, he says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee. So he's going to keep you from it. He's going to keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all of the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, what does this sound like? There's going to be a time of temptation that comes upon all of the world. This is one, a one world leader is going to wreak havoc. You're going to have all these seals, bowls, all these judgments are coming down on this earth. That's the hour of temptation that God promises that we will be kept from. Now, I've heard people say, well, an hour doesn't prove that it's through the Great Tribulation period. Okay, well, read Revelation. you got to remember John, the Apostle John. So this is the same author that wrote this book, also wrote this verse in Revelation 17, 12. He says, In the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So the ten kings of this world are going to give their power of all the nations to the son of perdition, the one world ruler and the beast. They're going to give power to him for one hour. So that one hour right there, it shows you that that's when the beast is ruling with the ten kings. That's the one hour that we're promised to be kept from. Revelation 3.10 Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And right here, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And here it is again. Wherefore, comfort one another. Comfort yourselves together is what he says. And edify one another, even as also ye do. This is edifying. This is comforting by giving the good news that we're not appointed God's wrath. That we are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and the clouds. Like it says, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. This is not a made-up secret doctrine. It's right here in your Bible. You're looking at it. Then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds. This is not the seventh, the second coming. This is the mystery that was revealed by Paul. Like it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. There's a group of us in the end times that aren't going to die. That's what he's talking about. And one more thing, and I'll wrap it up. People will be like, well, that's not God's wrath. That's the devil's wrath, okay? They'll say, we're not appointed God's wrath, but this isn't God's wrath. Well, you got to understand that if you read in 2 Thessalonians, he removes his restraint because he's restraining the evil to come. So when he, when he removes the restrainer, I think the verse says, only he who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then that man of sin the son of perdition will be revealed. So by God removing his restrainer and allowing these 21 judgments to come down on this earth and allowing the son of perdition to rule and reign for seven years, that's God's wrath. Because right now, he's restraining the evil to come. He's not allowing it to happen. 
So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. There was just a few scriptures I wanted to read. And like I said, Revelation 3.10 and 17.12 are great to show to people because I think it really nails it home because it says we will be kept from the hour of temptation that comes upon all the world. And then Revelation 17, the 10 kings of this world, they give their power to the beast for one hour, the same hour that we're promised to be kept from. But anyway, like I said, the Great Tribulation is seven years. It's broken into two halves. And there is a pre-tribulation rapture. So if you don't want to believe it, that's fine. You know, I don't think it's a salvation issue. And I know a lot of people that don't. I've tried to show them scriptures, but uh, I don't know. All I can do is share it and just leave it up to God. But uh, anyway, hope you guys have a blessed day. Talk to you later. Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm glad we're back today. I want to tell you about God. God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. And Jesus came to earth to die for our sins, and he raised from the grave so that we can can be, can be have eternal life and live with him forever in heaven. It's a great thing to talk about because God is the one who will set you free from sin and sin is the bad stuff we do and the bad stuff we think and the bad stuff we say and the bad stuff we do and the bad stuff we say like lying and not being truthful sin, sin is just on our hearts but god takes it and puts it on his own son while he's dying on the cross he took our sin so that we can live with him forever and that's amazing it's amazing that god takes our sin and gives it to and gives it to jesus and jesus dies on the cross and graves from the grave and he and we can have eternal life with him that's crazy but um, i just wanted to talk to you guys about that because i know I love Jesus. I just love you. And I want to say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.